With us now is Tom Milana with a very important men's health segment. And uh, Tom, who did you bring with us today? Today I brought Dr. Aaron Katz with me. And Dr. Katz, we got a chance to talk and visit on the phone the other day. Um, your reputation precedes you. Thank you. Yeah, pretty cool. Thank so, you very much. Tom, how did you connect the two of you? We connected about, I guess, four weeks ago. My family was honored at a prostate cancer event and someone introduced us that night and we kind of hit it off and four weeks later uh, we're sitting here. Excellent. I know, it's good, right? <laughs> I really believe that that's what yeah. it is. It's a, it's a combination of awareness, people coming together to make a difference in the lives of others. Sure. Uh, Dr. Katz, what made you decide to go into urology? Well, I wanted to do something for men's health. And, okay. you know, the way men's health has structured now, a lot of it is prevention. And a lot of the work that Tom and Man Cave are doing is for prostate cancer screening. You know, prostate cancer, Donna, is the number one cancer right now in men. There'll be over 200,000 men diagnosed. So we've made great strides in screening and prevention of prostate cancer. But unfortunately, still, there are about 25,000 men in this country that will die of prostate cancer each year. But through the efforts of our screening strategies with new techniques, like MRI, new biopsy strategies, new blood tests. It's a, a re, you know, it's just, just an incredible field right now, and I'm so excited to be here with you and educate your audience about this. Thank you. And Tom, how did you discover your prostate cancer? How, what was that moment for you? Was it through a screening or through a yeah, visit? Yeah, it was through an annual screening. Uh, you know, I am, I'm the exception. I'm the male that actually goes for his physical once a year, and it all started with an elevated PSA. And, uh, couple of extra blood tests after that led to a biopsy, which led to my diagnosis. You're world renowned for something that you do. Uh, can we talk about that, uh, the cyber knife process? Well, um, I'm actually known for something called cryotherapy, okay. uh, which is a freezing process of prostate cancer where we don't employ radiation or surgery. But I'd like to be known also as an integrative physician. I've done a lot of work with holistic medicine, herbals, dietary regimens to try and prevent prostate cancer, or even in men that have early stage prostate cancer. Many of the men that we're finding now, Don, it's incredible, don't need immediate treatment and okay. may go on to what we call an active surveillance program. And I've employed an active holistic program using dietary strategies, exercise, lifestyle modifications, and we can, in many cases, delay or actually even prevent the need for men to, to undergo the type of treatment that, that Tom needed. But if they do, uh, I've, I've worked on a technique known as cryotherapy, uh, which is an outpatient procedure employing very small needles that go into the cancer. It's very specific and targeted for cancer therapy and will freeze and kill the cancer automatically. Just wow, spontaneously. That's interesting. It's 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 phenomenal. I've been doing it for about 15 years now. I started at Columbia University, uh -huh. and now I'm at NYU Winthrop, and we have uh, one of the world's leading centers in this area as well. Okay, and that's called again cry. Yeah, cryotherapy, and, and okay. if we target just the area, it's called focal cryotherapy or focal ablation of the cancer. Rather than removing it or radiating it, we can just freeze it right in place and automatically kill it. Outpatient procedure and patients are back in their normal life in, in just a couple of days uh, cancer free. So it's, it's really a, a phenomenal approach. And Tom, in your journey as a business uh, professional, you have several companies, um, very philanthropic. You could be doing a lot of things. You could be running one of maybe six businesses that you have, right? Um, and instead, you're spending some time with us today so that you can, I guess, almost be a cheerleader for men to say, please, you know, go get checked out. It, it, what's your big why? Well, why do you do what you do from a philanthropic heart kind of thing? <laughs> It's just something that I always felt the need to give back and, and there's really nobody advocating out there on behalf of men's health issues besides Michael Milken and the Prostate Cancer Foundation. So it's just something that I feel obligated to do in some strange way. Well, it's a beautiful thing that you're doing it because it is making a difference because just like you said, early detection sometimes can be, you know, the most important thing. Absolutely. And, you know, what Tom and Mancave are doing, I really applaud them and uh, congratulate him on his efforts uh, be being diagnosed, being through the cancer treatment himself, and now taking a real proactive stance and educating men to get tested. And I do encourage men, if they're over the age of 50, to have that yearly blood test, PSA. But, you know, there are a lot of risk factors for prostate cancer. We know that men who are African-American, men that were down at the World Trade Center, men mm. that were in, in Vietnam that were exposed to Agent Orange, we're seeing so many of these men now you know diagnosed with prostate cancer they need to be tested earlier okay. we can't wait too long because we can't go back 
to the time when we didn't have the blood test like the PSA and men would come in with overt metastatic disease into the bone. So we need to get men tested and again I, I congratulate Tom and Man Cave for their efforts allowing men to talk to one another about their diagnosis in a real setting that men are comfortable with and also educating uh, men throughout the country that this is what we need to do to be proactive and not only about our prostate but our heart and our lungs yes. and our bodies and our body mass index and what we eat every day is so so important and physicians sometimes you know we get tunneled into just what we do as a specialist but mm -hmm. I like the holistic approach I like taking on looking at the person as a whole because it's not maybe just about that prostate cancer but what's going on in their body is so key and so important as a urologist um, you know frequency of urination like what are some early things that people or maybe maybe not so early but but certain things that say just run to the doctor just go is it uh, well inability to urinate you know sometimes what are some of the other you know, ones one of the things that we're finding or, yes right. with, with prostate cancer early stages they may have not have any symptoms at all Donna. okay so but the symptoms that you're talking about urgency, frequency, getting up at night, that may be a sign of an enlarging prostate, which could be prostate cancer, okay. doesn't have to be, but we need to exclude and come up with a differential diagnosis. But you're absolutely right, certainly blood in the urine, you know, if you're having any aches or pains in your body that you didn't experience before, if you're having a change in urinary symptoms or sexual symptoms, you do need to seek, at least go to your primary care doctor and then have him or her refer you to a board certified urologist. Yes. So correct me if I'm wrong, usually if you have have symptoms of prostate cancer, most of the time it's too late. Okay. That, that's why it is so important to get screened. So Absolutely get screened. right. Yes. And what is the measurement? That's true. Is it like 0. 0.7? Like what? I don't even know what the scale is. You know what? Is. The, the what PSA is the, test, which yes. is a standard test, there is no absolute number anymore. Okay. What we know is it really goes by age. So hmm. if you're under 40, your PSA should be under 1, 40 to 50, up to 2.5, 50 to 60, up to 3.5, and 60 to 70, up to 4.5. But, you know, you also look at age-specific range, but you also look at the test over time. So what we need to do is look at you as the individual. There's no one point that says, oh, well, wow, that's all right. Now, certainly I do see patients, unfortunately, that haven't been tested and come in with a PSA of 30. I mean, Ooh. they absolutely need immediate intervention. Okay. But some men may have a slow rising PSA, which could be just due to an enlarging prostate. We have newer techniques and tests that can help us as physicians and educate patients discriminate between an enlarging prostate, which can be bothersome in, in urinary and quality of life, and prostate cancer. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything else, Tom, that you would like me to make sure that our audience knows about uh, being well, about wellness? Listen, when it comes to your overall health, uh, you know, this isn't just about prostate cancer, this segment, right? Uh, I just encourage people, if, if just go to the doctor once a year. I don't know how many, you know, hours are in a year, but just one hour out of your year to, to go to the doctor and, and go for an annual physical, I think that'll go a long way. I agree. Um, anything else, Dr. Katz? I would agree. I mean, you know, I think that, you know, if there are early warning signs, if you have this in your family, I mentioned the risk factors, African-American exposure to the World Trade Center, Agent Orange exposure in Vietnam, or if you're just living in this country and, you know, there are chemicals and pollutants in the air and environment and toxins that we can't actually, you know, do anything about, you need to be tested. And the PSA is just one part of it, as Tom is saying, but you do need to check your, your overall health. You need to know what I say, your numbers. You need to know your cholesterol, your hemoglobin A1C, your blood pressure, uh, and uh, your PSA. And for men, you also need to know your testosterone level. Well, we can maybe talk about that in another segment. I would love that. And I do find it fascinating. Yeah. As you know, um, uh, there are men in my life that I love. Um, our audience at home, they matter to me. And sure. uh, my husband, Tom, I don't know if I shared with you, but he had passed away from colon cancer at oh. the age of 42. Wow. And on behalf of um, everyone, you know, just not to be afraid. It's okay. And I do have to just ask one more question. Why? What's your why? Why did you become uh, a doctor? Why did I become a doctor? I wanted to help people. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to make a difference in people's lives. And it was really in my heart and in my calling. Uh, maybe some of it was that I grew up with a disabled sister and around doctors a lot, a very, at a young, very, a very young age and exposed to that, but I felt a passion to heal and to help. And I continue to have that every day. 
Excellent. And, and I, thank you so much for having me on. No, here. you're welcome. Thank you very, very much. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you personally, they could go to your website. Um, as always, sure. Man Cave Health, woohoo, right? Uh, you, you have events going on all throughout the year. Somebody could go, they can learn more, they can make a donation to help you to build more man caves because the idea behind the man cave is that once they get there, you want them to feel comfortable and relaxed so that Absolutely. they don't just like turn around and walk out the door. Sure. So thanks guys. Please stay tuned. We'd love to hear from you. If you've got a success story, if you've got something that you're passionate about, especially when it comes to men's health, Tom and I would love to cover that story for you. Reach out to us.